There are an astounding 20 different factions in the board game apiary. Let's talk about them. I'm going to discuss how to maximize each faction's special ability, upgrade, and starting resources. Depending on the situation, you might play differently, but I'll assume you're going to lean into your faction's specialty. Every faction description will be self-contained, so feel free to skip ahead to whichever faction you need. Party can change the value of its bees as they are played. I'd suggest advancing your bees every turn unless they are already at strength 4. Every other action with your bees will be at strength 4 and you'll fill the hibernation comb quickly, but you'll need to get extra bees. The log is clearly the best hive map because you'll need extra bees. An ideal recruit tile might be nurse for extra bees. Any of the hibernation recruits are very good for you. Brood chamber and insulation would be great developments for Arty. Memorial or mausoleum should score well for you. You'll end the game early, so do nothing tile like Monolith and Colony might actually pay off. Upgrade your faction as soon as possible because it will score every time you place a B. Unless you can get a different source of workers, I'd suggest using your first Strength 4 action to upgrade your faction, buy a couple Bs, and maybe a frame. To do that, you need to get two pollen in your first two turns, probably by exploring. Refresh and then grow on your fourth turn. You'll refresh a lot, so it won't hurt to get a couple decent farms as early as possible. When you run out of workers, make sure you have two pollen and place your free worker as strength 2 on the grow action to get up to two more bees. Capeng can convert resources when they move an opponent's worker. If you plan your resources carefully, you'll hardly use this ability. You start with a decent mix of resources, so I assume you'll focus on building lots of tiles early. Skep or Ware have good placement bonuses that will help you keep building tiles. Lingstroth isn't bad either. To maintain momentum, you'd like to grab recruits that give discounts on building. You might want resource gathering tiles as well. Developments that offer free tiles or frames will be helpful. Expansion and preparation should score well for you. Upgrading your faction gives you extra resources resources, which might not make sense unless you do it very early. You start with Wax, so look at the available development tiles and consider playing one on your first turn. Try to pick up a placement bonus that helps you advance on your second turn. Once you have a couple tiles in place, you'll have a better idea of how your game should proceed. Carpa starts with great resources. Don't worry about your lack of faction ability as many recruit tiles are just as good as a faction ability. Any hive map but the log might work. You don't need the extra workers the log offers. Your overall strategy is very fluid. You will have to choose a direction based on the first few tiles you build. Your most important early decision is whether to take wax or honey. Assess the available developments. If you see tiles that will get you off to a quick start, take wax. If not, you might take honey. If you pick honey, replay bumped bees, maybe even refresh early to get a strength Strength 4B early enough to buy a good carving. At 5 points, your upgrade is marginal, so you'll have to consider it versus other options for a Strength 4 action. Use your early turns to buy a useful recruit, farm, potentially a couple development tiles. Let those tiles guide your strategy in the mid game. Given the power of development tiles, your ability to convert wax into resources should be used sparingly unless you have excess wax. Clearly any source of wax is particularly good for you, so look for recruits, developments, and the farm that generate wax. Grab the wax explore token if you can. You start with two workers, so the log is a decent choice of hive mats, but any hive mat might work. Note that Chemist sets up a nice arbitrage where you can turn a single fiber into three resources, which might overfill your storage for Queen's favor. Your upgrade isn't very good and I'd skip it. I'd rather spend wax on developments and you can already turn excess wax into resources which will generate queen's favor once your storage fills up. On your first turn consider buying a development tile. If there are very good farms or recruits you might convert a wax to buy one. During setup, you get to play two recruits for free. You must carefully consider the available recruits and let them guide your strategy. When you place your bees, choose placement bonuses so that you can build a farm or a third recruit on your first turn. Skep and the log both offer useful placement bonuses which would let you play a third recruit on your first turn. Palinologist or Diplomat would help you push your advantage in recruit tiles. Given your early start on recruits, Delegation or Emissary should score well for you. You score two extra points per recruit if you upgrade your faction. Given that you start with two recruits, upgrading should be a good idea late in the game. On your first turn, build a tile or explore to grab a good explore token and more resources. Make sure to consider your recruit abilities as they may guide you. 
Ivor can retrieve a worker every turn, so you might never retrieve or collect income from a farm. Because you won't take retrieve turns, you should place workers in the hibernation comb faster than any faction but Artie. Your strategy is fairly open, but I wouldn't expect you to build more than one or two farms. Early advanced turns will probably focus on recruits, and those recruits might give your game direction. Any of the hibernation recruits are very good for you. Memorial should score well for you, and Mausoleum should be easy to score because you have little reason to have extra bees. Upgrading makes sense if you have a two or three point farm and several more turns before the end of the game. You start with wax, so consider a development tile to accelerate your game. Otherwise, you'll probably explore to grab a good explore token and more resources. You gain wax or two points when you hibernate. You'll hibernate about four times in most games, so that's four free wax. You start with few resources, so you might want a hive mat with helpful placement bonuses like skep. The log is also good because you start with two workers. Chemist, patron, scientist, or engineer will help you maximize your advantage in wax. Some developments also provide wax. You'll build several developments, so with some planning, royal jelly might work out. You should score well on research or education. If you use your first strength for action to upgrade your faction, you should score about 8 points without giving up any wax. That's a decent option. On your first turn, you'll probably explore to grab a good explore token and more resources. Llama scores one point for each tile they build. You are incented to build as much as possible. Langstroth helps you build some early tiles, while Scap offers lots of useful resources. Ideal recruits might reduce the cost of the advance action or provide extra resources. Developments that build extra tiles or frames will prove helpful. Expansion and preparation should score well for you. Upgrading your faction provides a free advance action along with your growth action. That might be good enough if you don't have a better use for a strength 4B. You start with resources to buy your first farm, so that might be your first move. Ligu gains double the benefit of developments played next to its faction pile. Getting wax from any source is critical for Ligu. You start with no resources, so hive mats with helpful placement bonuses are nice to have. Ware and the log offer extra spots adjacent to the faction pile. You'll be looking to place developments, so engineer, scientist, chemist, and patron are all excellent. Development tiles that provide wax are helpful. You should score well on research. Add up the points and decide if you want to upgrade your faction late in the game. On your first turn, check to see if you can get the wax explore token. Otherwise, explore to get some pollen in case a helpful recruit tile comes up. After your first tile, try to build away from your faction tile to leave room for developments. Nika can make honey from any three resources, which is still pretty expensive. You start with excellent resources for farming, so you might lean into that. Most of the hive mats are fine for you, although you don't really need the log, and Poppleton lacks early placement bonuses that help with farming. Surplus might score well if you build a lot of carvings. Community and harvest seem interesting because you're hoping to build several carvings. Your upgrade might be useful, but only if it helps you score an extra carving for six or more points. Build a good farm on your first turn. If you grab a pollen from your placement bonus, you'll be set up to buy a recruit tile on your second turn. Farming for resources usually isn't as good as farming for points, but your ability increases the value of resource income. <laughs> Maria gets three free resources when they acquire their fourth worker. You don't acquire your fourth worker very often. It makes sense to keep yourself at four workers, but you shouldn't waste turns chasing this ability when you could just explore for resources instead. You start with a decent mix of resources. The log is excellent for you, as you can get your fourth worker quickly. Nurse would be a good choice of recruit tiles because you're motivated to get your fourth worker each time the worker hibernates. Otherwise, your strategy is very fluid. Brood chamber might help you get to four workers. Brood rearing should should score 8 points for you, which isn't terrible because it only costs 1 honey. Your upgrade is unlikely to pay off, so I'd skip it. You might build a farm on your first turn and try to pick up a pollen from the placement bonus. On your second turn, you could grow 2 bees and refill your resources at the same time. If you have the log, try to advance twice and get your fourth bee from the placement bonuses. Rhea and Rhea's opponent both get Queen's Favor when an opponent moves Rhea's workers. This ability is very valuable in a 5 player game because you get bumped a lot and the Queen's Favor paid to opponents is spread across 4 other players. This ability is useless in a 2 player game because your opponent gets just as much Queen's Favor as you do. I'd leave this faction out of 2 player games. Any hive mat might work well for you, but you don't really need the log. The advance action gets a lot of traffic, so bees placed on advance tend to get moved more often. A single bee on advance might even get moved 
move twice, so you want to advance often. Recruits that offer discounts to the advance action will help you advance more often. Queen's Chamber might be great for you. Remember, you only need 25 Queen's Favors, so don't overdo it too much. Retinue should score very well for you, up to 25 points. Otherwise, carvings that reward building, like expansion, might be appropriate. Your upgrade might be helpful if you do it fairly early. You might build a farm on your first turn. You collect income and extra time when you retrieve. To make use of this ability, you'll need an extra farm, or you could upgrade your faction to get two points each time you retrieve. If you get at least five points from retrieving, including your extra income, you should use the landing area and retrieve as often as possible. Langstroth, Skep, or Wari all offer placement bonuses that will help you build farms. Aquaculturalist, Agronomist, and Genetic Engineer all help with farming in different ways. Agriculturalist doubles your faction ability. Crop rotation or hybridization will help you build more farms. You might use pollen patty or serum to retrieve strength 4 workers so that they can be reused, and since they have the retrieve keyword, they also trigger your faction ability. Monoculture or irrigation might score well for you. Your faction upgrade is almost always good if played early. I'd consider using your first strength 4 action to upgrade. You start with good resources for farms, so try to build a good farm on your first turn. Seamay gets free cards. The cards tend to be quite good in Apiary. Allow your first three cards to dictate your early approach to the game. Your strategy is very fluid. Try to use your cards to accelerate your early game. If you want to push your early advantage in cards, Herbalist or Geneticist should help. Cultivars is a great way to get cards, whereas Arboretum or DNA Sequencing will help you plant cards under your mat. Advancement might score well for you. Your upgrade might pay off if you already wanted to buy some workers or a couple frames. It just depends on what you draw. You start with resources to buy a farm and that's a good place to start. If you don't like the available farms, explore for resources. <laughs> You get an extra resource every time you explore. You might lean into exploring if good strength 4 actions have been revealed. Otherwise, you'll use your ability to optimize the payout of each explore action so that you don't need to explore often. Your ability might make it tempting to overfill your storage for Queen's Favor. Any hive map might work for you with the possible exception of the log. Tiles like Pathfinder, Navigator, Cartographer, and Wayfinder further optimize the value of the explore action. With these, you might get enough value from exploration tokens and converting resources into Queen's Favor that you can explore a lot. Flight Path helps you search for Strength 4 actions on planets, and Drawn Comb or Cleansing Flight help you get more value out of the exploration token. Harvest and Orientation have the Explore keyword, so they'll trigger your faction ability. Discover might score very well for you. Consider how often you will explore and what you will do with the extra resources before using a Strength 4 action to upgrade your faction. You start with a Wax, so you should consider the available developments on your first turn. Otherwise, explore for resources and a good exploration token. <laughs> Visa has a catalog of developments and carvings. You start with two wax or honey. Your approach to the game will depend on what you've drawn into your reserve. Langstroth will help you play carvings and developments, but any of the hive mats might work. Any of the recruits that help with carvings, developments, or wax generation are helpful. Development tiles that provide wax or honey are also very good. Research or surplus might score well for you. Your upgrade gives you a carve action with a discount, so it's almost certainly worth doing. During setup, you must decide whether you want honey or wax. Look at the development. If there's a development that will jumpstart your game, take one or even two wax. If you have one honey, you can use your first strength 4 action to build a carving by upgrading your faction. If you have a choice between building a carving from your private stash or from the board, you might build from the board first. Your private stash will still be available later. Mm -hmm.